Hey, what's up everybody? This is Kay. And uh, sorry I haven't uh, uploaded any videos recently. Uh, you know, I gotta get something up. And uh, please excuse me. It's 5 a.m. just waiting for a render for a client. And so I thought just I'd quick a shoot, quick video. This is unscripted, so I'll do my best. So uh, what I'm gonna talk about today is I had a shoot coming up and for people that don't know me, I'm in production. I live in New York and I work on mainly Japanese television, Japanese commercials on the production side of things, but I'm a tech geek. And I didn't realize till I got into the industry <laughs> that, okay, production, I don't get to tinker with all the cool gear and camera gear, but I don't know if this is to the, my advantage or not, but the economy in Japan is really, really bad. And so maybe it's not just about Japan and America, but more and more, I, or I'm getting jobs where I'm asked to be a jack of all trades from flying the, a drone to camera operation, VTR, sound man, Sometimes I pseudo DP, but recently I've gotten a lot more uh, requests to be a one man band to shoot stuff that would have been impossible just a few years ago. And I asked a friend of mine who I really admire as a DP, he's not a DP, but uh, you know who you're talking about. Um, and he told me, yo, go, just go to YouTube, check out the creator rig. And what I saw was exactly, oh my God, this is exactly what I was thinking about. And so I took inspiration from that to create this monstrosity right here. It's not exactly the creator rig, but um, it's a mishmash of parts to create the, um, in my opinion, the most useful, amazing camera. If you have to be filming like one or two uh, talents in an unscripted uh, variety show, like travel shows slash, uh, you know, walk and talking conversation while pointing out like different landmarks kind of video. What do you call those? Sorry, I haven't had very much sleep. Uh, which means a lot of the time there's going to be two talents walking and you're following them. But then again, you have to run around to the other side and then kind of film them while you're walking backwards. And if you are only one person, you've got no assistant to make sure you're not going to crash into something or trip as you're walking. And then also they wanted me to do sound. Um, what else? Well, anyway, pretty much we want a video and can you please do everything? And this is what actually makes it happen. So let me just turn this on. So here I've got my Sony a7 IV HDMI out going to, uh, let's see, how should I show this right here? Oh, so I clamped on here. I've just got this uh, HDMI distribution amplifier that's powered by a US micro USB port that goes into this V-mount battery plate here. So from the camera, I get an HDMI out. Let me get that clamp. It goes into here and I have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four identical HDMI outputs, one of which which goes back into the DJI RavenEye right here. And the RavenEye is important because if you're alone, it's a lifesaver. I'll show you why in a second. Let me get the RavenEye turned on. And a lot of things probably don't make sense right now. Like why the hell is there an iPhone here pointed this way? But we'll get to that. And another one of these uh, HDMIs go to this six inch field world monitor. So 
So I'm going to connect to the Raven Eye by Wi-Fi. And while we're waiting, oh, there it is. Open up the DJI app. Okay. And this Insta360, uh, you can forget about this. This is just, I put this on here for some experimental purposes. And right, uh, oh, uh, so ooh, let's see, where should I even start? I have some carbon fiber rails here, a shoulder pad. Um, and this arm here is, to, I've got a cheese plate here that's holding the DJI RS3 Pro gimbal that's mounted this way. It's using the uh, base plate mount set. So it pretty much chops off the bottom portion where the battery is. And so I can mount it vertically on this cheese plate and have it powered through this uh, multi DTAP adapter on the V mount plate. So the beauty of it is that this entire system is powered by one V mount battery. So I don't have to go changing every single battery if a battery runs out. And when I got the, uh, I don't know if the same configuration is sold today, but when I got the base plate kit, it also came with this remote for the RS3 Pro. So, you know, you don't have to use this control here. You can, there's a cable here that goes into here and all the controls you have on the gimbal itself are on here. Right here, I've got the DJI GPS unit. And I got this for the car rig. Uh, and uh, it was advertised that if you're doing like really fast movements, which is what I was doing with the car, with the car rig, which is still in progress. I'll get to that. Um, but I decided to just leave it on there. And when you do put it on there, you get this, uh, when you do put it on there, the first thing that I think most people do is they'll go to YouTube or look for some kind of uh, official DJI video on how to use it, how to set it up and everything. But I could not find a single video on YouTube explaining how to use this. You know, um, let me, uh, I might as well. So, see this thing right here? Um, you mount, this is turning into a different video, but you mount the GPS unit on top of the camera facing upwards. It doesn't specify like if it has to be straight or not. I guess it doesn't care. But this was originally made for the RS2, which I didn't know. So you have to buy this adapter right here, which I don't even know what it's called, but if you go to DJI's website, uh, go to where the GPS accessory is on the accessories uh, section accessories for this, which is technically an accessory for the Ronin. Uh, they have this adapter to change this, uh, pro I don't know if it's proprietary. It's a, it's a connection that I've never seen before. But this adapter here changes this like multi-pin. It looks kind of like an old school parallel uh, data cable to a USB-C that plugs into the middle port of the RSC Pro. And so I'm wondering like, okay, so how do you know if it's doing what it's supposed to do? And on the screen right here, once it's hooked up, you'll see that there is a satellite mark. It's kind of, it looks just like the uh, satellite mark that you see on dro the drone controllers. And right now it's red um, because uh, there's a roof. But if you're outside for a while, it'll turn green, which means it has a GPS connection. And I've realized that it really does make a difference. Uh, the, it keeps the horizon uh, much better. Uh, like you don't have like this gradual drift in horizon. Um, 
And it also keeps uh, center much better. Like you move, let's say you're moving it around and then you double click to go back to center. It'll always go back to the right center. And I'm, I was actually pretty pleasantly surprised with that. So uh, if anyone's on the fence about it, so far it's um, been pr working pretty well for me. Uh, of course, if you go indoors, you have no GPS signal. So that being said, let's get back to the main topic right here. Um, uh, so as the poor man's creator rig, I just uh, devised a trial and error system of my own. I've got this, these carbon fiber rods here from small rig. And then I also used a bunch of remaining parts to make this like secondary short rod rig here to act as a support so this cheese plate with all this heavy stuff here doesn't fall forward. And at the same time, on this side, I've got this uh, small rig arm attached to here to kind of pull it back to make sure that, you know, from both sides, triangularly stabilized, well, triangularly and squarely, and then also if you can see from here, I've got this arm with this uh, small rig uh, SSD holder that just happens to be adjustable to the width of here to just give it a little bit of extra support here. Because if this is the only point of contact, I don't want the entire front section to be just straining this portion of the gimbal, which I don't think is a good idea. So that's, oh, um, I just happened to have these legs lying around and I just put them on here and realized it's pretty nice because if you want to put this thing on the ground, you know, it'll stand up with four legs. And um, also when you're actually using it, you know, it does get kind of heavy, but once it's on your shoulder, as long as you've got it balanced right, it's actually pretty nice. And these legs that I was just talking about right here kind of act as like an L-shaped, uh, like it, it, it touches your back if you go like this. So it gives you some extra like uh, support in a sense. And here's where it gets pretty interesting for me is that, uh, these handles here are, uh, what do you call them? The uh, Russian uh, locking, uh, I forgot what it's called. The, the locking mechanism uh, screws. So once you tighten them, they're never gonna go loose. But I also want this grip right here to have the controls for the gimbal, the ability to double click, and right now it's rolling, but let me change that back. You know, if I want to change like settings, I actually do have to go back to the menu. Let me change that back to, um, right now I'm being using the Sony G 16 to 35 G lens, which is a PZ lens. So I need my reading glasses. It hates getting, it, it sucks getting old. Uh, I'm gonna change this to for, uh, zoom. And because it is a PZ lens, the gimbal is connected to the camera via Bluetooth. So now this, you can't see it here, but it's uh, controlling the optical zoom right now. So I've, um, I like to, to put the camera here. You can't see it from there so I can see the horizon. It turns green when it's on the horizon. And on this monitor here, it's a little bit bigger. Um, I could, you know, turn, I set it so I can turn focus peaking on or off and, uh, of course, I've got the histogram on uh, with 
shooting S-Log3 uh, Cine 3. And so let me come to why this iPhone is here. The iPhone's here is because the iPhone inter is wirelessly interfacing with the Ravenite transmission here, system here. The Ravenite has one feature that is a lifesaver for one man operation. And that is the fact that uh, for lack of better objects, let me, how should I do this? I should have thought this out a little bit better. Let me put the camera down here. So I'll tilt down to this Sprite can and no, this video is not sponsored by Sprite, but the Sprite can here, and I'm gonna just draw a box, a box, uh, that should work, but I'm gonna draw around a box around the Sprite can. And then what happens is, Yeah, I've never tried this. I don't know if this works on a, on a can, but... See that? Um, if I'm walking backwards to shoot the talent that are talking to each other, um, I'll draw a box around the talent, and I just gotta trust it. But as I'm walking back every few seconds, I'm gonna have to go like this to make sure I don't fall. And I realize that it doesn't, it's not perfect, but I can walk backwards and be able to go like this and the camera will stay totally uh, pointing the right direction as if I had an assistant that was just walking, watching my back for me. Cause usually, you know, you're going like, if you go like this, your horizontal is gonna be off. Like everything's gonna be like, it, it's gonna look like a mess. And the footage was actually usable. We just got some hot meals. And I think that's what happens when we have our talent walking backwards. <laughs> yeah, so we, we uh, get some, what did we, we got some good eats at Tenichi, some hot food. Kind of scared you're gonna bump into something and drop it. <laughs> so we're walking down on North Third Street. Um, this is a very iconic block. We have Rains down the block, which is a rain gear store. We have Away. Away. Very high tech, high tech uh, suitcases, small, medium, large. Pretty interesting. Seen that before. So you you sync it to your phone, and then yeah. the suitcase follows you. And what yeah. happens if the suitcase is following you, and you start running because you are gonna miss your flight? So you run to the gate, so it speeds up, and then an old lady or something gets between you and the suitcase. What happens? Then. That's a lost luggage. I don't know what to tell you. Or lost grandma. <laughs> lost grandma or lost luggage. That's pretty much all I got for now. I think it's a pretty good start. I have a feeling that in the future, a lot of manufacturers are gonna start coming out with rigs that are kind of made like this to begin with instead of this Frankenstein that I have here. And how many, much better, just, I got one minute immediate left. So, but yeah, in a time like this, it's awesome because you can just mix and match and put together a totally new type of rig and I'm going to run out of media. So I'll see you guys uh, soon. Bye guys. Thanks.